What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back in again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE wrestlers who couldn't actually wrestle. Now, this should be a very interesting one. Sometimes uh WWE ends up hyping somebody up or creating this this uh um promo package for an upcoming wrestler, upcoming star to get the crowd hyped up and then they debut and you know maybe they have a squash match you don't really get to see all too much you know too much of their talents but then as time goes on they have more matches and they're they're not squash matches you start to realize they're not that good in the ring i just realized my green screen was still on y'all i didn't even activate the green screen <laughs> let me let me fix that for y'all real quick hold on there we go let's do this and boom there we go. Green screen fix. I didn't even fix it. Either way, I'm gonna keep all that in. It, it's it's part of the part of the the organicness of the video. Either way, we start to realize that the wrestlers that got hyped up aren't really that good in the ring. So we're gonna check out some instances where WWE definitely hyped up an individual, and then you found out that they couldn't really wrestle like that. Appreciating all the love and support, man. Let's get right into this video. I don't know how I messed that up. <laughs> WWE wrestlers that just couldn't wrestle. <laughs> Number 10, Eva Marie. Ooh. When Eva Marie debuted in WWE TV in 2013, yeah. they still had a habit of pushing female talent that weren't the best in the ring. Mm. Now, in WWE's defense, Marie had some major heat from fans, yet when she wrestled, she completely fell apart. Yeah. Marie was far too green for the main roster, and she was exposed when the bell rang. She even spent time in NXT, and this did little to offer any kind of significant improvement. Marie was even brought back for a second run during the COVID-19 mm -hmm. era, and this was a baffling move, as Marie offered zero signs of improvement, which meant that the second run was ultimately a complete waste of everyone's time. Facts. Number 9. <laughs> the Great Khali Arriving in WWE in 2006, the great Kali was positioned as the new arch rival for The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Kali looked incredible as he stood over 7 feet tall and WWE offered a great presentation for Kali that made him look like a megastar. The issue was that Kali simply couldn't wrestle. He was put in the WWE ring with elite names Boy. such as The Undertaker, Rey Mysterio and Batista, yet these legendary talents couldn't get a passable match out of Kali. Kali had a ton of limitations as a performer, yet this didn't stop WWE from persisting with the Kali push, and in 2007, he would become world champion. This was a world title reign that not a single fan was pushing for, nope. and this reign greatly <laughs> exposed Kali as it was a sign that Vince McMahon was greatly out of touch in terms of what the overall fan base wanted. It took some time, but WWE eventually moved Kali down the card, and he would spend the rest of his WWE career in more comedic roles. Whilst his in-ring ability was always a problem, he did manage to get somewhat over as a babyface in the later stages of his career, mm -hmm. and his popularity and influence on the Indian market for WWE can never be denied. No yeah, he wasn't the greatest in the ring. You could tell by his mobility. It's just, you know, he, he was having a tough time just being fluid and, and moving around in the ring, especially when you're that tall, that big. Like, it can, it can be a daunting task. It's very rare that you see... A traditional big guy moving around the ring and it, it looks it looks like it makes sense and the number eight spot on this list giant gonzalez number eight giant gonzalez unfortunately wwe have time and time again brought in lousy wrestlers to work with the undertaker and in the 90s they brought in a wrestler known <laughs> as giant gonzalez that. Despite having a ton of size, Gonzalez was one of the worst performers The Undertaker's ever shared the ring with, and their matches in 93 were truly atrocious, despite the dead man doing his very best to try and deliver a passable match. Speaking to Sam Roberts, The Undertaker spoke honestly about Gonzalez as an in-ring performer, and the dead man stated that the program with him took years off his career. Damn. That whole thing took years off my career. I would be in much better shape now if I could have skipped that one program. Damn. As physically demanding as it was, it was twice as much the mental strain because you have Brett Yokozuna going out and having these great matches. Obviously, you want to be mentioned in the same breath as those guys, and it was just not possible. Jeez. Number 7. The Boogeyman The Boogeyman uh. was thrown onto the main roster with very little training, and he was given a major push almost immediately. Mm -hmm. The Boogeyman character was unique, and it was over with the audience. However, like all supernatural characters the character had to eventually wrestle and this is where the mystique was shattered 
The boogeyman wasn't at the level WWE or the fans wanted, and his matches with the likes of Booker T and JBL were laughable at best. <laughs> the boogeyman was eventually moved dramatically down the card, and for good reason, as it was impossible for WWE to book him in high profile feuds if they knew that the end matchup wasn't going to deliver. Having a riveting and engaging gimmick is vastly important in wrestling, yet the in ring work has to be up to par. Names such as Taker, Mick Foley, and Bray Wyatt were a testament to this. Their characters and gimmicks were legendary, yet these men had the ability to deliver a ring. classic in ring product with anyone on their respective roster. Number I mean, the Boogeyman situation, it creeped me out when I first saw him. I was like, oh, he got worms and breaking a clock over his head. Dude's fucking insane. And then the match starts. And then you're like, oh, he is scary. He's scared for the wrong reasons because he's not good in the ring. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> his gimmick superseded his in-ring ability. I'm not saying that he was just awful, but you remember the Boogeyman for, more for his gimmick and his backstage presence than his actual in-ring work. So. Six, Nathan Jones. It's often been the case in WWE, they see a wrestler and they believe that they will be the biggest star on the planet. Mm -hmm. This opinion is usually formed thanks to their appearance and nothing more. This was often the case during the old era of WWE, where Vince McMahon preferred his top guys to look a certain way. In 2003, although wrestlers such as Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, Rob Van Dam, and Booker T were all amongst the most push wrestlers in the company, this mindset still firmly existed as WWE debuted Nathan Jones. Jones had an intimidating look, and although he was insanely green, they debuted him in a program with The Undertaker. This was going to lead to the two teaming this, yeah. at WrestleMania 19. Mm -hmm. Shortly before WrestleMania 19, they realized that Jones just wasn't ready for such a prestigious yep. position, and his WrestleMania plans were dropped. Jones would re-debut in the company in late 2003, this time as a menacing heel. This new heel run led to more ring time, and although he was wrestling names such as Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit, Jones was simply not cut out for the big leagues. Number 5, King Mabel. In an attempt to create a new yeah. star, WWE decided to push Mabel in 95. He would win the illustrious King of the Ring and would go on to challenge Diesel at that year's SummerSlam event. King Mabel was subpar in the ring and when he wrestled Diesel mm -hmm. at the SummerSlam event, it highlighted all of his flaws and his in-ring performance was so bad and reckless that Vince McMahon almost fired him on the spot. Mabel would have numerous runs in the company, including runs as Viscera and Big Daddy V, mm -hmm. yet he was often criticized during these runs as his in-ring output was consistently failing to hit the mark. Number 4, Heidenreich. Heidenreich was just another larger than life superstar that WWE paired with The Undertaker, and just like other names on this and list. I think with Mabel, I think also it, it didn't it didn't work that his size, like his size kind of hampered him and you know with that also comes the health side of things so it didn't really help <laughs> you know the size on top of the health that can be detrimental if you're in a wrestling ring you know Heidenreich's in-ring work was terrible. The Heidenreich <laughs> character was an interesting one as he would often come down to the ring wearing a straight jacket and his alliance with Paul Heyman should have been a recipe for success. Unfortunately when the bell rang he often looked nervous and he failed to have a good match. He had somewhat more success as a babyface as part of his new version of the Legion of Doom, yet even still, fans still called out his in-ring work, which showed little to no improvement. Number 3, Vladimir Kozlov. Ooh, Following WrestleMania right 24, here, WWE debuted mm. Vladimir Kozlov, and from his first match, it was evident that WWE saw dollar signs. Yep. Before fans knew it, Kozlov was pushed into the main event scene, and this saw Kozlov enter into a feud with Triple H and Jeff Hardy. This push was completely unwarranted as the fans weren't reacting with the excitement when Cos Vince was really high on him. And it's crazy to know that at one point, Vince wanted Vladimir to beat the Undertaker streak. Thank God that didn't happen. But Vince was very high on Vladimir, man. Sloth's music hit. And most of his matches were lifeless squash matches. With Kozlov entering into a few with top names, this meant that he was now wrestling longer matches. And this was a massive detriment to Kozlov, and he looked completely out of place. Negative reactions to his in-ring work aside, they continued with his push, and he would even defeat The Undertaker clean on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Over time, Vince McMahon realized that Kozlov wasn't going to be the menacing top star he wanted, and he eventually admitted defeat and decided instead to place Kozlov. Kozlov in a comedic tag team with Santino yep. Marella. Number 2, Ahmed Johnson. The WWE had every oh, reason man. to push <laughs> Ahmed Johnson as his WWE arrival came at the time when new stars were badly needed, and the more WWE pushed Johnson, the bigger reactions toward him seemed to get. 
Sadly, Johnson's in-ring work was at a questionable level, and he was known for being incredibly reckless in the mm -hmm. ring. It's often Unsafe. said that it's vital that wrestlers trust each other in the ring, yet numerous wrestlers had issues with just how stiff and brutal Johnson could be yep. within the squared right circle. That. WWE legend Ted DiBiase summed up these issues with Johnson on his podcast by stating, Big guy, great appearance. Obviously, Vince McMahon was going to push him because he was the size he was. It looked like he did, but you know, he wasn't a great worker. In other words, he had to have somebody on the other side of the ring who could lead him. Mm -hmm. Johnson eventually exited the company in 98, and there were numerous reasons as to why the departure happened. Yet ultimately, Johnson found himself in WCW, where he unfortunately fell into a pit of obscurity. And number one, the Ultimate Warrior. Ow. It always leads to a ton of discourse whenever a wrestling fan claims Damn. that the Ultimate Warrior couldn't wrestle. On the surface, Warrior couldn't wrestle. He was extremely limited as a performer, and numerous wrestlers Damn. have called Warrior out for his limitations. However, limitations aside, Warrior still had the ability he to tell an power. excellent, captivating story with his matches. Matches against the likes of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage were tremendous. And yes, this was in part thanks to the abilities and aura of the two aforementioned names. Yet Warrior still did his part in the respective matchups. Current WWE star Gunther summed up Warrior's abilities the best when he appeared on the bump. He's a showman. He's not an athlete, not a professional wrestler. He's a showman. But there you have it, folks. Dang, I do WWE wrestler. That. The question is, how do y'all feel about that? Because obviously the Ultimate Warrior is kind of a little bit before my time, really. His prime year. So I want to get y'all opinion on that. For those who actually was able to watch the Ultimate Warrior back in the day, y'all let me know. Do y'all feel like his in-ring work was subpar, but it was more so his star power that carried him and other wrestlers that carried him? Let me know how y'all feel about that. And also let me know if there's other wrestlers you feel like that deserve to be on this list. I definitely would appreciate that conversation down below. But I appreciate all the love support. Road to 150K. And I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.